Yeah, yep, go ahead. Okay, gentlemen, on 512 B to the book of card out in Philly. Uh, maybe you want to figure it out. I'll let you know when it goes for now. See you about a minute or so. I'm going to really down the line. Okay, yeah, okay, no worries. I'll take care of that part. Bills are printed, all drivers are logged out. We make sure. Randy, how you doing? Morning, good keep now, uh, Brett. Canvas battle complete noises. Denver. Can we have one of the drivers just one of them try and load to see if the problem has been resolved? Copy that, stand by. Okay, hi guys. I managed to get the digital decoding of DMR signals to work a little bit. And to be truthful, I was messing around with a lot of different settings. And I'm not exactly sure what even corrected the problem. But I have a few different ideas on things you might like to try if you're trying to get this to work for yourself. Um, what you were hearing, I guess I'll just mention quickly, was some public service, so it might be wheelchair accessible transport. There's something like that in Canada called DARTS. I don't know if that's what that is, but it's some kind of, uh, I don't know, some kind of taxi service that moves people around, but it's not taxis. Anyway, 
Um, one thing that I found was that when I was getting this, when I was trying to get this to work, when I was trying to get this to work, the recording tab, if you go to sound on control panel, the VB cable in the playback and in the recording tab was not really working. I'm going to show you that it does work. You can see it's picking up some volume there. And Chris. And there. And I'll just stop okay. this so I can talk. Anyway, on various different settings on the DSD interface where you're choosing the audio device and in this audio section where you're also choosing the audio device, I currently have them both set to the VB input cable. So, so this software, this VB audio virtual cable software, is actually working. But I think what actually made the difference in my circumstance was that this was non-functioning. It wasn't picking up any sound. There was no reading on it. It was silent, basically. And then when I went into the file folder for this particular program, and I opened it up, and I clicked on Control Panel. I'll show you what I clicked on. I went into the file folder VB cable control panel dot exe and I clicked on that. I said yes and then it allowed me here to check out the input levels. I'm not sure I completely understand this but anyway as this was playing I could see that there was a reading on the input values and not only that but um, there was also a reading on the control panel for the sound for Windows for the playback and recording there was also an up and down here. So anyway that seems to have made a difference. Um, once again I'm just going to say it again I know this is a terribly worded video it's unscripted I'm tired I've been up late trying to figure this out once again, when I checked the control panel for the sound devices on playback and recording, there was nothing. It was completely dead while this was uh, on play. And I was actually listening to the spectrum. And likewise with the cable output, it was also dead. Dead silent. But again, once I went to um, the file folders for the VB audio, and I went to control panel dot exe open this up it seemed to do something where it enabled the sound settings on the playback and record for the VB cable which seemed to allow this virtual cable to actually work properly within the plugin within the DSD plugin on the sharp And just a few last things to check. Uh, I'm kind of learning this myself, but um, playing around with the gain, gain control of what you're hearing might help a little bit. There's a reason to think that. This is a completely separate discussion, but I was actually in another room in my house where I have a CB temporary base station set up and I was actually trying using a separate antenna separate rig for my CB I was trying the CB out and actually um, picking up my transmission on the SDR software and I could actually watch it visually but anyway when I was doing the CB transmission yesterday I noticed that I wasn't able to hear my CB transmission properly when I had the gain all the way turned up. So likewise if you're having issues picking up a DMR signal or any signal you might want to play around with the gain. That's really all I was trying I'm trying to say there. I'm trying to think what else I noticed. Oh yeah. Try adjusting the squelch. 
Uh, one other thing, it appears you can actually decode a digital transmission without the use of this software. And if you go up into the audio, here's the audio section here. This is kind of grayed out. You can't pick this selection here. And I can't even really read this. But I'm noticing that this is actually called Microsoft Sound. And I think it might actually be Sound Mapper. It's this MME Microsoft Sound Mapper. So I think automatically chosen in SDR is this Microsoft little application called Sound Mapper, which is almost functioning almost similar to this VB cable. Uh, the only problem is, is if you use this Sound Mapper and just the speakers and no, actually, that's yeah. And you use just the, you use the speakers instead of the VB input, and you keep the VB. So you use the VB input on the DSD interface. I'll just show you, and then you click speakers here, and then it's already chosen the sound mapper. You're actually going to get the undecoded DMR transit transmission on top of the actual decoding of the digital signal. So you get the actual radio type of noise along with your decoded voice from the transmission. I'll show you that. So you're hearing both. You're hearing that radio transmission and you're hearing the voice as well. So I hope you followed what I said. I know I've been a little bit confusing. But that's why this VB Audio Virtual Cable really does come in handy. Because without explaining too much, it really does allow you to cut out that radio noise transmission, that DMR signal, and just give you the decoded audio, the decoded voice transmission. So that's why it really is better to be using this software, but as I found, um, okay, never mind. Ignore that last thing I just said. I haven't experimented yet with uh, the recording feature. Looks like you can record just exclusively the audio or the bass band, but that isn't really relating to the DSD interface, so I'm not exactly sure how that works yet. Well, you can see I'm learning this for the first time. I haven't understood everything. So anyway, this may have confused you more, or it may have helped a little bit as far as things to look at while you're trying to troubleshoot this. I know it isn't very well explained. I know that. But I just whipped this together really quickly. Maybe it's helpful. OK, so that's been a little bit of a ramble. Sorry. But one other thing to consider, and I saw this in some of the comments that was mentioned in Tech Minds video, some of the YouTube comments, uh, it's important to have a strong signal strength so that you can properly decode the digital signal. So that might be a reason why you're having problems. The software might be working perfectly fine, but if you're not getting a strong signal, you're going to have issues decoding the signal. So that might be a problem too. It's also a little bit of a challenge at certain times of the day, or actually at night. In my case, I was up all night for reasons I won't go into. But uh, yeah, there's a there's not a lot of transmissions. Period at three o'clock in the morning. So if you're experimenting with this software at strange times of the day. Uh, yeah, you're not going to get a lot of transmissions. Always the best time, I think, to check for any signals, particularly DMR signals, is first thing in the morning. This is when, like, everybody's getting going for the day. Everybody's going to work. Uh, bus companies, cab companies, construction companies, uh, city workers, they're all talking to each other starting their day on the radio. So if you really want to experiment 
with uh, trying to decode DMR signals early in the morning, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Those are the best times to do it, and you'll have more success experimenting and troubleshooting at those times. Okay, thanks for listening. I hope that was helpful. I just tried to tell you everything that I thought was helpful and worth considering. And I guess also I should mention that I'm only using a cheap, thin RG6 cable. It's not a thick, low-loss transmission cable. It's a, it's a very thin one. And I've got it hooked up outside to my own homebrew, homemade, uh, disc-owned type of antenna, which is good for listening to ham radio on the 400 megahertz range. So that is what I'm using. So that also might be an issue in, in trying to get a uh, transmission to decode into uh, voice transmission is the uh, antenna for one and then the cable strength. This, this could also be an issue. And that could be why you're having trouble if you're like me. Okay, thanks for listening. Have a good day. Bye. Okay, yeah, I guess I had a few more ideas. Okay, so um, this is in the DSD interface uh, plug-in section, control panel. And when you go to configure, you can choose um, right, left, or mono, or auto. I did mess around with that. That might have actually been something that actually helped improve the problems I was having. I'm not really sure. But one interesting thing is, is when I was listening to this taxi service, that's the frequency around here for it, I noticed that some of the voices for the transmissions, some of them were on the left speaker, and some of them were on the right speaker. So that probably has to do with the technology of the uh, Motorola walkie-talkie system that this particular company has. But for whatever reason, some of the transmissions were ending up on the left speaker, and some were ending up on the right. I don't know why it would even work that way, but it's kind of like a stereo sound system almost maybe like FM radio. Maybe it's transmitting on two different speakers. I'm not really sure of what I'm saying, but uh, when I brought them both into mono as opposed to auto, it seemed to correct that problem a little bit, and that's worth playing around with. Um, yeah, don't forget if you're changing any of the settings in here, uh, hit create command line every time you do it. Otherwise you could end up with problems.